Hi guys, today we're going to have a look at Bastel Payroll Overview and Sage ESS. Let's begin with Bastel Payroll. Once you create a company on Bastel Payroll, you can run weekly, fortnightly and monthly employees. Our starting point is under Setup Company Parameters. This is where you're going to go set up your company details, your telephone number, your contact person. Under statutory is where you're going to go and add your PAYE, your UIF, your STL, your VAT number, and your trade classification. Also, if you belong to an industrial council, you'll be able to choose which industrial council you belong to. The next thing we're going to do is go have a look at what's available under the edit menu. Employee profile, employee master file, cost centers, job codes, pay points, departments, occupation list, skills and equity industrial council. So our starting point, if you want to print reports via cost codes, job codes, pay points, you have to go set up those first. So let's have a look at cost centers, at the code and a description, and you click on OK. If we look at occupation list, what occupations, just type in a name and you go OK. Now, say for example, we've got weekly and we've got monthly employees. We've got 20 weekly employees and we've got 10 monthly employees. What I would do, I would set up an employee profile and link each employee to your profile. What a profile does, it allows you to put the default transactions or default information which belongs to each employee. Once you link an employee to a profile, it will not be necessary to go insert all this default information. Okay, so let's have a look. So you'll see I've got three employee profiles, monthly, weekly, and fortnightly. Let's look at the monthly profile. What happens on the monthly profile is you'll have to say if the employee is monthly, he can pay it by check, bank, or, or cash, and his tax method, and whether he is permanent or temporary, which pay point he belongs to, which cost center he is involved with, and his job code. Then under the transaction tab, you could add in the default transactions which each employee will have. Anything specific to an employee, you'll go add manually on their pay slip. Under the leave tab, you'll put the leave entitled, what, what leave they're entitled to, annual leave, sick leave, unpaid leave, family responsibility leave, and a number of days. Under the working days, you're going to put in the hours per day, hours per week, and days per month. You click on save. So let's show you how the profile works. If you go edit employee master file, you set up an employee code, title, and here on the right, you choose which profile they belong to. If they're monthly, weekly, or fortnightly, so we've got, we've got a monthly employee here. Surname, name, nickname. Under the details, start date, date of birth, passport number, if, if required, uh, marital status, dependence. Then you have a address tab with all the addresses, which are compulsory field for source. Contact details. If you're going to email the pay slips, you go put in an email address over here. By default, payroll uses the employee's ID number as the password for the pay slip. Okay. And here you're going to say whether they, are, they will be appear on employment self-service. Okay, under the payment tab, any information that we entered under the profile will now be pulled through. It'll say it's tax on average method, it'll be checked, but you'll still be able to change it if it gets paid by bank transfer, um, what pay point he is, what job cost he belongs to, what job code he is, which department, and his um, occupation. You can also go and add who he reports to. Here on the right, you're gonna put in his bank details. Okay. Under the tax tab, you're going to enter whether he's, his tax number and which tax office he belongs to. Under the leave tab, if you're capturing data for the first time, you have to go and insert his opening balance and it'll pull through the entitlement from the profile. Okay. Under the statute tab, you're gonna go say whether they're active on the URF. If not, you have to specify a reason. 
under medical aid, you have to specify the number of dependents on the medical aid. What will happen is someone's on the medical aid, payroll automatically add in the medical aid transactions, 8090, 9090, and the medical aid fringe benefit. Okay. If an employee is entitled to ETI, employment tax incentives, you'll be allowed to go and change that information there. So let's go and have a look at the payslip itself. Process payslips. Once you create all the employees, you're able to select the employee from your magnifying glass. Okay, let's have a look at this employee. What happens is you've got a default income, deductions, benefits, contribution, and leave tab. Under the default tab, all the transactions which you entered under the employee profile will appear here. Then from here, what payroll does, it takes each transaction and puts it under the relevant tab where it belongs to. A basic salary will appear under the income tab. Um, PAYE URF will appear under the deductions tab. And any benefits you have will appear there. And company contributions, UIF, STL will appear over there. And if an employee takes leave, you get, it gets entered on this screen. Okay. The default tab is what employee should have every month on his pay slip. If there's a change, say he gets a bonus for this month. You don't add it to the default tab, otherwise it will pull through next month, every month thereafter. You just can change it under the, under the income tab. So you go to income, and you find annual bonus transaction. Here we go, you've got annual bonus, and say he's gonna get 5,000 bonus. Now next month, this transaction will not appear on the payslip because we've only gone and added for this month the income tab. Once you're happy with your payslip, you click on save. And from there, you can go and preview your payslip. And what's the payslip? That's what the payslip will look like. Okay. It is possible to get the company contributions and benefits to print on the payslip. Mine is not set up to do that at the moment. Okay. At the bottom, you'll see total reductions, net pay, leave days due, other leave. Okay. Once you've done your, don't you, once you have your payroll, the information will not pull through to the reports until you've done what they call a payroll run. Has to do that, you're gonna go process, payroll run, next. I'm not going to print the payslips, so I'm gonna say perform the final calculation without printing the payslips, filter, and I'm going to choose my monthly employees only. Okay, next. And process. Okay, now you'll see if I go back to my pay slips, everything is grayed out. I cannot make changes to my pay slip once I've done a paddle run. If you do find a mistake, what you can do, you go into the visual pay, pay slip and you click on clear run flags. What this will do, it will allow you to go make changes to your payslip and correct whatever mistakes there are. And then all you do again is go payroll run and it'll gray everything out. Okay, just get through that. There we go. You'll see this now payslip is complete. From there, you can go print your payroll reports. Look at the pay reconciliation. Let's choose monthly screen and whichever month you want show details let's go okay 
Okay, and there's the employees by stuff. There's the two monthly employees, and on the last page, it'll show you a summary for all the monthly employees. Now, if we go back to view payroll reports, you can also go print what they call a monthly analysis, which is a very good report to have a look at. Let's go look at monthly screen from which code to which code for how many months. So you can say we want for seven months, show details, and I'll give you the information for seven months for that employee, for all the employees. And on the last page again, it will give you a summary total. There are various reports available in payroll. There's a, there's a leave um, report. Then under view statutory reports, this is where you're going to go able to print your UF return. Let's just choose to all employees, screen. And there is your UIF return available. Okay. Then it can also be done electronically. If you go view payroll reports, UIF, electronic declaration, it will create the file which will log into your email and then email off to the UIF for you. If we look at the EMP 201, there's your monthly declaration. And they will tell you gross, gross PAYE, if you had any ETI, net PAYE, STL, and UIF, and a total paid to source. Under the view menu, back to EMP201, if you want details of the 201, this report will show you the details per employee. And then on the last page again, you will have a summary. Payroll also has a facility to generate your RP5s. So what you need to then do is, first thing is to print your exception report and make sure there are no exceptions on your payroll. There's my exceptions because I don't have my, all my company information in. Once this is cleared, you'll be able to go into view, statutory reports, generate electronic certificates and import into easy file. But it also has a facility to allow you to set up your skills and equity per employee and generate reports from that. Once you're complete with your payroll, you cannot continue with your next month unless you do what they call a pay period update. I advise a payroll period update only be done once you're ready to do your next month's salary. To recap what I've gone through with you, once you set up your company, you need to go into set up company parameters and fill in your company information, name, address, etc., and fill in your statutory information, etc. Then I went through how to set up a cost center, job code, pay point, a department, occupation list. Then I went through the employee profile by linking employees to profiles. So you don't have to go recapture information, each employee you want, want to link to profile. Then we went into edit, employee master file. We'll show you how to set up a master file. From there, we went into process, pay slips, and we went through the different tabs under the process menu on the pay slips. From there, we went to view payroll report to generate the pay reconciliation, the transaction listings, monthly analysis. And then from there, we went to generate the UIF return, the EMP201 return, and the procedure to run the export of the file for the RP5s. Then we went to process pay period update once you're ready to do your next week or your next month's salaries on wages, you only run that once you're ready, not straight away. 
If you need any help with your payroll, please drop a comment in the box below. Next, we're going to look at Employment Self-Service, also known as ESS. When setting up your Employment Self-Service in your payroll, you have to set login as user zero on your payroll. And then on your setup menu, you're going to go into Self-Service Administrative Profile. In there, you're going to set up your name, surname, email address, and a password. Once that is done, you click on OK. It'll ask you, do you want to upload your employees to ESS? I'm not going to upload my employees as I've already done all the uploads. Okay. What the system has done is gone and created a username and password for each employee. We are now going to log on to self-service and we're going to go through the basics of self-service on the internet. So first of all, I'm going to log in as the administrator. And you'll see you have inbox, new requests, approval structure, and what's on today. The first thing you do is go and set up your, under your admin, default approval structure. So here on the right, you'll see it's got administrator. Who falls underneath the administrator and who falls underneath the, the payroll administrator. I've already gone and added my employees. And you'll see what the system has done. User maintenance has gone and um, created all my employees with a username and password. Okay. So what self service allows you to do, I'm just going to log in as myself. Self service allows an employee to apply for leave, apply for travel, apply for claims, change their personal information. Um, look at the leave balances, look at, look at the approval structure and what's on today. So let's take a simple example. You apply for leave, you're going to say the type of leave you want to apply for, annual leave, the date required. Okay. You can even apply for partial day. So even half days leave, you'll be able to change to partial day. You can attach documents and give a reason. Then you're going to go apply, submit. So what the system is now doing is gone and sent my leave request to the payroll administrator. Okay, so let's log out and let's log in as the payroll administrator. Okay, so in my inbox, you'll see I have two requests. If I go view, there are my two requests. I can view the request and now I can decide whether I want to decline or approve the leave requests. What will happen from here, what if I approve the leave request, will be sent, I'll get an email saying, this leave request has been approved and I need to upload it into my payroll. Also from here, let's log out again and log in as myself. Under personal profile, they can go change the details, they can view the payslips and download the payslips. The payslips are now encrypted, so when they open the payslip, it'll ask him for the password. So back to payroll. Once you log into your payroll, you'll get a message saying that there are ESS transactions which you need to action. So what you'll do then do you'll go to process, self-service, create batch, whether it's a leave or a travel batch or other you want to create. So if it's going to the leave one, it'll pull through the leave request which I actioned, and you will go create batch. Okay. Once that is done, you'll go process, process batches, batch transactions, and all the leave that I've approved and, and pulled into my payroll will be now shown here, and you'll just update pay slips. What will then happen, these transactions will appear on the employee's transaction screen. Um, under process pay slips. So there's no more recapturing of travel claims or leave. Everything will be done automatically. You'll still be able to make changes before you finalize the process on the pay slip. If you have any queries, please contact the About IT team. Thank you very much.